What is going on everybody? It's your boy Average Leader here with another video and today we are tackling number 359 log rate limiter. This question is commonly asked by Google, Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, and Oracle. If you guys can go ahead and hit that subscribe and like button, that would mean the world to me. It helps my channel out a ton by giving it more exposure to people that don't know me. And if you want to see another problem done, just comment down below and I'll make sure to do it for you guys. And with that all out of the way, here we go. So we need to design a logger system that receives a stream of messages along with their timestamps. Each unique message should only be printed at most every 10 seconds. So, okay. I like this. They even bolded some like very key uh, important details. So we have multiple messages, but it looks like the unique messages should only be printed at most every 10 seconds. Oh, okay. So we can have as many messages as we want, but if we uh, have seen a message before, then that message has to come 10 seconds after uh, the previous time it has appeared. Okay. So we'll keep that in mind. So it even goes in message printed at timestamp t will prevent other identical messages from being printed until timestamp t plus 10. Cool. All messages will come in chronological order. Several messages may arrive at the same timestamp. Okay. Uh, implement the logger class and the logger initializes the logger object. So it even tells us we have to initialize some data structures uh, using the logger constructor. So then we have the method should print message, which takes in a timestamp and a message and returns a Boolean. So we return true if the message should be printed in the given timestamp, otherwise we return false. Okay, so why would a message be printed on a given timestamp? Oh, I see, so, so a message has to be unique. So if it's a unique message, then we'll return true. And also, if we've seen a message before, uh, as long as the message that we're passing in right now comes 10 seconds after the last time it's seen it, I guess then we'd also return true. So, okay, let's, let's look at this example a little bit more in depth and we'll do it on the iPad. All right, so I took this example straight off of LeetCode and I just presented it in a way that's a little bit more easy to read. And remember, according to our problem, all we're trying to do is figure out if we should print our uh, message. If we can print it, we'll output true. And if we can't print it, we'll output false. Okay, so that's what we're trying to do. Now, what are the criteria that we need to follow uh, in order to print our message? Well, one, our message has to be unique. And two, if our message isn't unique, it has to have been 10 seconds since we've last seen that message. So now let's start thinking of some data structures that we could utilize. Okay, so for uniqueness, most data structures have a contains method. Uh, and you know, using a contains, we can, we can check to see if that data structure contains the element. And if it does contain it, then we know it's not unique. But there are tons of data structures uh, with a contains method that doesn't run uh, in the most efficient time complexity. Let's try to think of one that runs at a time complexity of O of 1. The first one that comes to my mind is we could use a hash set. Okay, so now we've settled on a hash set. We know that we can check for uniqueness in a very, very quick O of 1 time complexity. Now we need to think of the criteria. Has it been 10 seconds since we've last seen the item? So using the hash set, we can use the contains method. But is there a way where we can figure out the last time we've seen that element? We really need a way where we can store these timestamps for each element. So maybe instead of a hash set, we could actually use another data structure very similar to the hash set in terms of like time complexities. We could use a hash map. And what a hash map does is it has a very efficient uh, contains method running at O of one. And two, we could store key value pairs in the hash map where the keys will represent um, the messages that are going to be that we're considering outputting and the value can be the last timestamp that we're going to compare to so let's see what that would look like in this example so first things first let me just erase some of this stuff that we have right here and since we're we know we're going to use a hash map we'll initialize a hash map in our constructor in our code so now let's look at our first input should we print message foo at the input of one. 
Okay, so let's let's look at our criteria that will tell us if we can print it out or not. Uh, one, is it unique? Well, let's look at our hash map. Since it's not in our hash map, this is the first time we've seen it so far, and thus it is unique. So what we're going to do is let's output true, and let's also add it to our hash map. So let's add the key, and the value will be the timestamp uh, of foo when we actually output true. So uh, when we actually output true, foo is at a timestamp of one. All right, let's move on. Uh, should we print message bar at the timestamp of two? Well, let's ask ourselves the question, is bar unique? Well, since it's not in our hash map, uh, we know it's unique. So let's go ahead and output true here. And let's uh, add bar to our hash map. And let's also add the timestamp for the very first time that we decided to output true. So this happens when bar is at a timestamp of two. And now let's go to should print message uh, foo at the timestamp three. So let's ask ourselves the question once again, is foo unique? Well, looking at our hash map, we see that foo is not unique. We've seen it already. So now let's go to our next question. Has it been 10 seconds since we've last seen it? Well, right now, foo is at a timestamp of three. And the foo that's in our hash map is at a timestamp of one. So it hasn't been 10 seconds since we've last seen it. It's only been two seconds. So because neither of our criteria is uh, fulfilled, we're going to output false here. And now I think you guys are seeing this. Let's just keep going through uh, this example. Should we print the message bar at the timestamp of eight? Well, does it follow the criteria? Well, is it a unique message? Uh, well, according to our hash map, we've seen it already at timestamp two. So no, you know, it, it's not unique. And let's ask ourselves, has it been 10 seconds since we've last seen it? Well, we're trying to print out bar and it's at timestamp eight right now, but the last time we've seen it being printed was at timestamp two. So only six seconds have passed. Um, so since neither of the criteria have been fulfilled, we're gonna output false here. And now let's ask ourselves, should we print message foo at the timestamp 10? Well, let's see, uh, is foo unique? Well, nope, it's in our hash map already. So let's ask ourselves, has it been 10 seconds since we've last seen it? Well, almost, it's only been nine seconds since we've last seen it since we're trying to print out foo at timestamp 10 and, so, and we've only had it recorded at timestamp one. So only nine seconds have passed. We're gonna output false one more time. And finally, should we print message foo at the timestamp 11? Is it unique? Well, no, we've discussed this. It's in our hash map already. So has it been 10 seconds since we've last seen it? Ooh, now in this case, it has been because we're trying to print foo at timestamp 11, but we have it in our hash map at timestamp one. So it in fact has been 10 seconds since we've last seen it. So what we're gonna do is I'll put true here. And in order to make sure that in the future, if we try to, uh, print message foo at a later timestamp. We can't keep comparing it to timestamp one because that's been that's really old, right? So since we've output true, we need to update the current timestamp of foo. So now the last time we've printed out foo will be at timestamp eleven. So now all future foo values will be compared to this timestamp of eleven. So yeah, I mean you know this is the output that Lead Code has uh, in its example, and um, that's how we're going to tackle this problem. So let's go ahead and try to code this thing. All right, so. Uh, first things first, we know that we need to use a hash set. Um, so let's let's create a hash set uh, outside here. And I'm going to have the key be strings and the value be an integer. And remember, the, the string will be the uh, message and then the value will be the integer value will be the timestamp. And we'll just call this times. And let's initialize it in uh, our constructor. So times equals new hash map. There we go. So look at that. First step, we're done. Now let's go on to the meat of this problem. Let's go to the should print message method. So uh, every time we, we were considering printing out a message, we asked ourselves two things. One, is the message unique? And two, has it been 10 seconds since we last seen it? And we're going to try to simulate these two criteria in uh, this method. So to check if the message is unique, uh, all we have to do is see if our hash map contains the message. So let's, we can do that very easily like this. If times.contains key message, we're going to do some logic in here. This is where we'll take into account this criteria right here. But if it doesn't contain the key, 
we will add it to our hash map. So all we'd have to do is times dot put message, and we're gonna put the timestamp associated with that message, uh, timestamp. So since this is a unique message, we can also return true right here, return true. Now looking inside the if statement, uh, now we need to do some logic to make sure it's been 10 seconds since we've last seen the message. So if our hash map contains the message, let's check to see if it's been 10 seconds since it's last seen it. And we can do that by doing this. If the timestamp that we're evaluating, this one right here, if the timestamp that we're looking at, because we know that this timestamp will always be greater than the one that we've recorded in our hash map since uh, we're told that all messages will come in chronological order. So if the timestamp minus times dot get message. So this is getting the previous timestamp that we recorded. So if the timestamp minus the times dot get message is greater than or equal to 10, then we know that it has been 10 seconds since we've last seen the message. So we can return true. And before we return true, let's update the value for our message key in the hash map. So we can do that by doing this times dot put message timestamp. So this is just simply updating our hash map. And for whatever reason, we don't actually go into this if statement. That means that it hasn't been 10 seconds since we've last seen the message. So we'd want to return false if it hasn't seen the message. So I believe this is it. Let's just run it make sure I didn't make any mistakes. All right, this is accepted. And let's submit this code. All right, look at that. 26 uh, milliseconds faster than 96% of Java submissions. Yeah, I mean, this is how you code this code this thing out. It's actually very straightforward. Not too many lines of code at all. Let's talk about time and space complexity. So looking at the time complexity, uh, it looks like all we're doing is checking to see if our hash map contains uh, our message and that, that runs in all one time. And we're also putting a key value pair into our hash map, which also takes all one time. So this should print message method only takes all of one time to run every time it's called. So overall time complexity looks like it's only all of one. And the space complexity, uh, since we have a hash map, which at max can hold um, all the messages, let's just say we have 50 unique messages. So that means 50, all 50 of those messages are going to be inserted into our hash map. So uh, that's essentially an O of N uh, space complexity where n is the uh, number of messages that we are actually going to hold. And yeah, guys, I mean, that's how you do the problem. If you found any value in this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe and like button. Uh, it really helps my channel out a ton by just showing it to more people that don't even know me. And if you wanna see any more problems done, just comment down below uh, what problem you'd like to see done and I will make sure to do it for you and I'll even tag you in the video. But other than that, I hope you guys have a great rest of the day and I'll see you guys next time. Famous for flaming you fuck, naming my way through the brush. There was no training or taming of me and my bro. Live like a man, but I'm animal raw. We are the murderers there. Dead with the jail and we murdered the murderers there. Then with the hell and discovered the devil delivered some hurt and despair. Used to have power to push. Now I smoke power to push. Holy, I'm burning the bush. Now